Women Taking the Lead, bonus episode number 20. Oh, how I love to help others. It makes me feel so good to solve other people's problems, to give them a helping hand, and take some of the stress off their shoulders. I especially love it when I don't want to deal with my own projects and problems. Hello, my name is Jody Flynn and welcome to Women Taking the Lead, where we are all about creating blasts of inspiration to help you overcome self-doubt so you can lead with confidence, integrity, and a sense of humor. Head over to womentakingthelead.com to join the community and get the resources to support you on your leadership journey. Now, your future awaits, so let's get started. Hello everyone, it's Jody here and I hope you are having an amazing week. I can't believe this is the 20th bonus episode. It doesn't seem like I've done that many, but here we are. And this episode represents the last of three bonus episodes that I have dedicated to talking about who we are not namely our alter ego that has a tendency to appear when we are under stress. And I introduced the concept of the alter ego in bonus episode 18, defining who you are starts with who you are not, and dove into two of the most common stress reactions in bonus episode 19, common stress reactions that derail you part one. Well, here's part two. In this episode, I'm going to give an overview of two other common stress reactions and what you can do if you choose not to utilize these reactions in any given moment. I say choose because I want to underline that there is no right or wrong in how you respond to stress. It's just that some reactions will move you toward your goals while others will move you away from your goals. And it's up to you to decide what's happening in the situation. So here's another common stress reaction. It's tolerating and coping, and I call it the chameleon. While this stress reaction is much more agreeable and feels better than shutting down or overreacting, if you constantly choose this method of dealing with stress, you will never truly be happy. This is the stress reaction of choosing your battles, but you must choose wisely. While tolerating and coping are great short-term strategies, they are debilitating long-term strategies. For example, if you had guests coming for the weekend, you're not likely to bring up and address every little thing that they do that doesn't follow house rules or just plain gets on your nerves. They are there for a short time, and the goal is to make your guests comfortable and for everyone to have a good time. So you tell yourself they just don't know any better, and you put it aside and move on. However, if these guests are building a new home and out of the graciousness of your heart, you offer to have them live with you for three to six months, it would be a different story. In this instance, you would be better off using a different strategy, having a conversation upfront about house rules, expectations, and strategies of dealing with conflict. But many of us don't think to set expectations in advance, you know, or there, or we don't see an opportunity. Because you see, we have been raised to be the chameleon. We grew up hearing, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it at all, or bite your tongue. Instead of resolving conflict, we stew in silence or vent to a trusted friend and colleague. And venting relieves some of the pressure, but the problem remains. In the wild, chameleons are known for their ability to blend into the environment. They take on the colors and patterns around them so a predator cannot detect their presence. The problem is when you become the chameleon, you hide who you really are and take on a persona that feels uncomfortable to you. And it takes a tremendous amount of energy for you to change your spots, so to speak. More energy than you realize. Think about when you come into a new situation and you're meeting new people. You're likely on your best behavior because you want to make a good impression or at the very least not make a bad impression. You put extra effort into your appearance, think about what you say before you say it, and your behavior is guided by what's proper or expected. How exhausted are you by the time you're back in your home, your safe space, and you can let your guard down? Now consider all the areas, relationships, and places in your life that you overlook and tolerate things that bother you because you don't want to make a fuss. 
The difference here is rather than being in a new situation, which gets your attention, these other situations are ones you've adapted to over time. You likely don't even give much conscious thought to them anymore, but your subconscious is giving them a lot of consideration. In relationships, are you being nice, which is sort of inauthentic, or are you being kind, which is compassionate? Because sometimes compassion looks like telling someone the truth, even if it causes conflict, even if they don't want to hear it, even if you don't want to say it. Sometimes telling someone it's fine when it's not is a betrayal to the relationship. Non-conflict becomes more important than the relationship in this case. Is it truly not a big deal or is it the truth that you are too uncomfortable with conflict so you'll be miserable rather than say anything? That is, until one day the situation becomes threatening to your lifelong happiness and the Amazon warrior comes out. Our alter ego tricks us into believing non-conflict is the same as peace and harmony, but it's a lie. Because the conflict still lives within you and there is a price to pay when you wage that war on the inside. If you feel tired in the morning, have a hard time focusing on or engaging in what's in front of you, if you need to recover on the weekends, you are likely using this stress reaction as a strategy in many areas of your life. And there are a lot of people who use, I'm getting old, to dismiss the symptoms of this stress reaction, but that's just denial. That's the chameleon at play. Take, I'm getting old out of your vocabulary and replace it with, I'm not dealing with something. The devastating effects of using this stress reaction as a long-term strategy are the same effects of growing old quickly. I know many people who feel and act like they are 20 years older than their real age. The tolerating is taking a toll on their body. And there is a cure for this mysterious early aging disease. It's called conflict resolution. When my clients go through my coaching system, they identify everything that they are tolerating in their lives and start addressing them one by one. And in no time, they start feeling different. They have said things to me such as, I feel like a weight has been lifted, or I never noticed how hard it was to breathe. But after the conversations, I started taking deeper breaths. I had no idea. And... I cleaned out the garage this weekend. I have no idea where the energy came from. (laughs) Have you ever wondered where some people get the energy they have? If you take a closer look, you'll probably see a person who addresses conflict calmly and directly as it arises. They are not using the chameleon as their stress reaction, and so they don't waste energy on being someone they are not. Is it time for you to let go of being the chameleon? To prevent the chameleon's energy drain, commit to being true to who you are and what you are feeling. Say no when you want to say no. Say yes when you want to say yes. If it's a situation that requires you to make a sacrifice in honor of your values, give up feeling like it's a sacrifice by choosing it 100%. If you're going to say yes anyway, do it wholeheartedly. It's relating to it like it's an obligation that's messing with your energy. And if you're interested in identifying all the areas of toleration in your life, I've got a worksheet that can help you with that. Okay, the next stress reaction is focusing on others. And I call this the superhero syndrome. (laughs) Oh, how I love to help others. It makes me feel so good to solve other people's problems, to give them a helping hand and take some of the stress off their shoulders. I especially love it when I don't want to deal with my own projects and problems. Being able to focus on someone else for a while takes the attention off what's causing me stress in my own life. And this is a surefire way for me to feel better for a little while. The problem is, while I'm off saving the day for somebody else, my own stuff gets neglected. My business, my home, my finances, my health, etc. All you current and recovering people pleasers, are you with me? (laughs) Tell me if this sounds familiar. It starts as you giving out of the generosity of your own heart. You see a need that you know you can take care of and your instinct is to take care of it because that's you. You're a giving person. 
It's part of your identity. So you swoop in and contribute your time, energy, and or resources, and it is so appreciated and makes a difference that you light up on the inside. It's like a drug. You get a jolt of the feel goods, so you do it again. And it starts to become a regular thing, so regular that other people stop relating to it as a gift that you generously and with sacrifice to your own needs give, and they start taking it for granted. Now it's no longer a gift. It's an obligation and obligations don't make you feel good. They make you feel burdened. But if you stopped giving, people would wonder what's wrong with you. What made you so upset? And that's not you. You're not the type of person that takes things away because you're upset. That's childish and you're not childish. This is now a crisis to your identity. Continue to give resentfully or take it away and risk your reputation as a helpful, giving, generous person. So now you're on the hunt for any semi-valid excuse for why you can no longer give what's expected of you. I mean, you can't possibly just come out and say it no longer works for you to give or heaven forbid, ask to be recognized and appreciated for what you give. Heavens to Betsy, who the hell does that? All the while, your own needs, your projects, and your mission in life are taking a back seat, only to be given attention when there are deadlines, emergencies, or wake-up calls. And the saga continues. Cue the music. Or maybe this is your wake-up call. Maybe it's time to look at what you need, what you want, and to start seeing that your needs are met and you get what you want. This is the superhero syndrome. Another aspect of this syndrome is the constant need to fix problems, save the day, and be the hero. Helping someone find solutions and helping them resolve a problem when they want and need your help is great. But with the superhero syndrome, help is given even if it's not asked for and sometimes when it isn't needed. The superhero will become frustrated if others won't let them help because the superhero believes they know better. Like allowing a toddler to wobble and fall as they are beginning to walk, we all need space to make mistakes and learn by doing. Now imagine the superhero swooping in whenever the toddler goes to stand and takes their hand. The toddler will take a lot longer to learn to walk because they won't develop the proper muscles or come to understand balance as quickly. The superhero sees people in need like toddlers who are about to fall and hit their head on the coffee table. It's done with love and care, but this perception the superhero has puts them above everyone else, and without knowing it, the superhero sends a message to others that they are better than them. If you find yourself suffering from the superhero syndrome, you are likely exhausted trying to keep everyone else from falling apart or making bad decisions. You also don't have the time you'd like to get your own house in order. You're so busy taking care of everyone else, your life has taken a back seat. But if you want to have the life you've envisioned, you have to switch from being the fixer to being the mentor, if that's what the other person wants you to be. To make sure you your generosity and giving continue to feel good and a source of renewing energy for you, start setting boundaries around your giving. Only give when you choose it, when it works for you, and when it's wanted by the other person. If giving feels like an obligation, either try to recreate it so there's some energy there, or if it's no longer something that draws you, bring it to an end in a way that works for you and your values. Really consider what you want and what you need. Do you know what you need and want and the difference between the two? Also consider what works for you and what doesn't work for you. There might be some conversations to be had that might make you a little uncomfortable, but consider how uncomfortable it's going to be for you to continue to do something that doesn't work for you. By being true to ourselves, we model for others how they can be true to themselves as well. And here are some tips for managing your alter ego. Bring awareness around your alter ego by naming it, drawing it journal about it, or write a song about it, whatever works for you. The more aware you are of this part of you, the more power you will have over it. When you know the thoughts, feelings, and behaviors you have when your alter ego has taken over and what triggers those reactions, the better you will be at catching your alter ego before it has done too much damage and you can handle the situation from there. Trust me. 
Knowing is half the battle. You are going to feel like a whole new woman as you start working through this process. If you want help identifying your stress reactions, I have an assessment I use with my clients that gets to the heart of the stress reactions that are running the show and keeping them from hitting their goals. Just go to womentakingthelead.com forward slash assessment to get more information and buy it if it's the right next step for you. Again, it's womentakingthelead.com forward slash assessment. Let me know what you thought of this episode and what your chameleon and superhero look like when they come out in response to stress. I hope this was helpful to you and here's to your success. Thank you for joining me on Women Taking the Lead. Are you ready to take the lead in your own life but need some support? Head over to womentakingthelead.com forward slash contact to introduce yourself. And to strengthen you on your leadership journey, I'd like to send you off with a quote from Marianne Williamson. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Again, thank you for joining with me and here's to your success.